Hey everyone, it is Keith McGinnis here with KCDC Designs out of Eagle, Nebraska. Wow, check this one out. It's a black onyx marble, and let's just jump right into it. I fog my board like I always do, including the top surface, and here's the colors we're using. Onyx and Ebony Luster, both by Color Passion. That's going to be the base colors, and then for the accents, Aluminum, Mother of Pearl, Shooting Star, Intense Copper, and a little Aluminum Light, Brown Dye. Oh. I don't want to go completely striated. I want to keep them random. And I know I should leave some behind and I'm going to. Now I'm starting off with my main base colors, which is the onyx and the ebony luster. <clears throat> the onyx is more of an opaque black, the ebony luster um, is, is a, it's like a really dark charcoal, um, if not even a black charcoal. But as you can see, I got those poured out somewhat randomly. They look the same on the surface, but once you get them melted, oh my gosh, what a difference it makes. So now what I'm doing is in some of the areas, I'm adding the bling, the bling being the mother of pearl and also the shooting star. And the reason I'm adding that onto the dry surface, opposed to adding that over the top of my melded colors is the weight of those metallics of that bling could sink and actually I want them to be somewhat transparent and that's another reason for fogging the board and fogging the surface is because where wherever that bling is or any transparent colors that's where by fogging that surface those are going to fogging that surface is what's going to kind of peekaboo through uh, where you have any of those translucent colors really, really adds a lot. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just melding those colors in and, and I'm basically I'm just covering the areas of the dry surface because I want to make sure I have um, the entire surface epoxy because as we know epoxy is going to flow where epoxy already is. <clears throat> and so that's what I'm doing here is just getting those melded in and that's going to give me the first look at my palette so to speak. That's going to give me the first look at how how it's going to appear. Now obviously there's going to be some areas that are a little bit thinner, but as long as you have your uh, surface level, the epoxy is going to self-level. Oh, oh, oh my. I'm liking this a lot already. Now I'm just going to speed this up a little bit while I get the rest of that melded in, but like I say, once I get that, all those colors melted, I'll be able to kind of take a look at everything. Wow, that is gorgeous. Uh, I'm going to take a little bit of that shooting star and move that out here and move a little bit of the black in there. And this is where I'm doing that fine tuning. And I can take a little bit of the black and move that into the bling if I need to, just to soften. Oh man, that. Whoa, baby. Whoa, baby. All right, I'm going to torch that out and we'll let that level out. <clears throat> so I'm going to get my air bubbles torched out, but watch how, and this is where you have to be patient to allow everything to really start to soften up and start to look more natural. Man, that is really, really pretty. Let's get some of the aluminum in there, and then I can run a little bit of, a, little bit of the brown in the aluminum. Boy, that's a lot of bling. <laughs> there is a lot of that. Oh, that's not too much bling for the customer. Let's get a little bit of the silver maybe over where the bling is. A couple notes about adding in the aluminum. Number one, it can really take over. And the other is, watch how very, very lightly I'm melting that in. I'm not pressing down at all. And then what if I run a little bit of the brown? Just a little bit of the brown in there. So now that I have my base colors in there, uh, I've got the two shades of black and then the bling that's in there, the mother of pearl, and then also the uh, shooting star, which is a blinged. And those are kind of faintly seen below, I guess, if you will. Now what I'm doing is to try to tie in a little bit with the customer's floor, I'm adding now the Alumalite Brown dye. And I'm putting that Alumalite Brown dye 
uh, in the areas of where that aluminum is to try to break that up just a little bit. Again, because I want that brown to just be an accent. <clears throat> then I'm going to stand back and take a look at the project from different angles. I'm going to step back and take a look at it. And it looked to me like there was a, just a little bit too much of that aluminum right in there. So I'm just adding a little bit more black. Now I'm going to torch that out because I want that to soften up a little bit. As you can see how that's moving. Now the customer did ask for some copper accents. And so that's what I'm doing here. And that's where that intense copper from the uh, just resin uh, paste comes in. And that's what I'm doing here is adding in some of the copper accents. So now that I've got the copper accents in, or I guess once I get those done. So now what I'm going to do is uh, in the first sample board I did for the customer, I had put some spray paint veins in there. And so that's what I'm doing here is I'm adding in some spray paint veins and I'm actually using uh, six different colors. I'm using champagne bronze, oil rubbed bronze, a black metallic, black, white, and a metallic chestnut. And that's, there's, that's a lot of colors to add in a vein, but with a spray paint vein, it's not. Because those colors, as I'm adding those in, I'm kind of pressing those into the resin. <clears throat> And I'm layering those colors. Once I get those, all of those colors in that I want to add, then I'm going to use my heat gun and I'm going to open those up. I'm going to move those around. Um, and that's where those colors are going to very faintly appear. So six colors, uh, six spray paint colors really isn't a lot uh, when you're adding in the veins because of the fact that they're very tight for one, as far as the amount that you're putting in there. And I'm going to back up just a little bit. It's also important to allow your resin a chance to set up. So when you add those spray paint veins, the spray paint isn't going to start flowing and start spreading out. Um, I like to keep my veins fairly tight. And so uh, that's why I do it that way. Now I'm adding in some white. And you have to be really careful. As you can tell, white can really take over. But... It is a really, really cool accent. The contrast of that white, it's amazing uh, how, how that looks once you uh, start moving that around uh, with your heat gun. And keep in mind, you're always reassessing uh, for whatever you're doing with your project. When you're adding colors, when you're melting, when you're, it's so important to stand back and take a look at your project from a distance. But that white right there just seemed a little bit too much. So I'm just going to add a little bit more color in there. Then I'm going to grab my heat gun and then we're going to start what we call painting with air, right? And so that's coming up next. And so when I get the colors that I want in there, let's move it around a little bit. All right, move that around a little bit with heat gun. Funny, seems like I just mentioned that. So now I'm going to grab the heat gun and you really need to practice with your veins. But as you can see, I'm going right down over the top of the vein because at this point right now, what I want to do is just kind of open that up. And you can see, for one, as it starts to heat up the resin, it's going to become more fluid. And that's what I'm doing is kind of heating up the area a little bit. And then I'm coming straight down to open up the vein. Then I'm going to come in from side to side to kind of move that a little bit from left to right to give that more of an authentic look and kind of take away that man-made look. Again, by practicing with on a sample board with veins, you'll, you'll get to know how the metallic spray paints react, how the gloss uh, and the other types of spray paints react, and then how you can move those around in different techniques that you can uh, utilize with your heat gun to, to get those veins to move the way you like them. And so Here's kind of a quick shot of what that vein is going to look like. But anyway, uh, work with it how you like it. And then what I like to do is to spritz it with alcohol once I get done with all of my veins. And I like to spritz it on somewhat early. Um, to me, I just I like the look. I guess we're spritzing the whole thing. And I'm very early on spritzing it. so. A lot of that is going to settle out, settle out and settle down. So we'll see what happens with that. But that is really, really pretty. So the bling 
ended up not overtaking as much as I thought it was going to, or as it looked like it did uh, in the very beginning. The, the two black colors, the Onyx, and then the other one was the uh, Ebony Luster. I like it a lot. Customer's gonna like that a lot. I'm walking away. Once again, boy, how did I do that? So in less than 45 minutes, Keith is walking away. Put that one down on the calendar. Ah, that's it. I'm walking away. I'm done. We'll do a little flyover. So a couple notes on the flyover. Number one, look how everything has softened up from when I very first melded those colors in. Um, and I know it's difficult to see, but you might, you can see a little bit of the shadowing there from the two different colors of black. But again, look how much all that has softened up. Now, in hindsight, what I did do differently on the actual customer's countertops is, see those copper accents? I ran those copper accents before I ran my spray paint veins. And then what happened with the heat gun when I was moving around the spray paint veins, it, already, it, it also softened up those copper accents. And I wanted those to be more distinct. And so what I did for the customer countertops is after everything else was done, that's when I ran the copper accents. Uh, look at that corner. That brown really, really pops and really makes a, a, a real subtle difference, but a nice little contrast. And again, will tie in real nicely with the customer's floor. But it, it, see how it almost looks ghostly? That's because of melting it very, very lightly with your hand. And then that's allowing some time. Look at that vein. See the And how I set up her, it, it gives a really, really cool effect. It spreads out when you first put it on there, but then it'll close up a little bit as you use your heat gun. It's really cool. I like it. 45 minutes and Keith is walking away. Well, the customer loved it and said do it. So here's the kitchen countertop, and then I'll also show a picture of the island, and then I did get that installed, so stay tuned. Uh, thanks, everybody, for watching. Uh, please leave comments. Please click the subscribe button for upcoming tutorials, uh, and hit that like button. Thanks for your support. I appreciate it. Once again, this is Keith McGinnis with KCDC Designs, and we will see you on the next video. Thanks, everybody.